Welcome to your daily writing habit, episode number 520. If you're writing a book or thinking about it or trying to finish a book that you've started writing at some point, or maybe you need help reaching more readers to let them know about your book, you are in the right place. Good morning. Happy Sunday. I'm your host, Christine Whitmarsh, also known as Christine Inc., like that stuff we write with. Each day, I'm sharing with you the writing habits I've learned over my 19 years as a ghostwriter, book coach, and author. I have found that three things in particular have a huge impact on your success as an author, and they have the ability to turn a quote-unquote non-author into a published book author. Those three things are writing fundamentals, productivity, and mindset habits. And once again, good morning, happy Sunday. What we do here every Sunday on the show is called Sunday Storytime. That's where I go to my bookshelf and I grab a book, whether it's one of my own books. I've written, how many books have I written? Five books. (laughs) One of my own books or a client book or just a book that's had an impact on me in some way that I believe can help you. And then I read an excerpt from that book followed by a learning or activity question that you can use to help you in your writing. It's all about you. Got to help you finish those books, right? So today I grabbed uh, my own memoir published earlier this summer. Thank you so much to those of you who have been buying it and reading it and reviewing it and really excited by the response to this, especially um, from the sco- my fellow scoliosis survivors, so the scoliosis community. They've really stepped up, and I love the feedback. So thank you all. The book is called The, <laughs> the Power of the Curve. So you can go to powerofthecurve.com. I'll put that in the show notes, but powerofthecurve.com for information to get a copy. And here is an excerpt from my life story. But wait, what's this? Next to conduct, there was an A minus. No way. Unfreaking believable. I was livid. Fourth grade Christine Whitmarsh was put on this earth for one reason, to get straight A's. Yes, maybe I had the gift of gab, Maybe I had an opinion or comment on everything that happened around me. And yes, I liked making my friends laugh. Maybe I had even disrupted class a few times. But an A- in conduct? Absolutely shameful. I was a model of perfect conduct. This could not wait until class was done. As the teacher returned to her desk, I jumped out of my chair, marched up to the front of the room on my skinny nine-year-old legs, and waved my report card at her bemused face. I think you made a mistake. I said very sternly. Mrs. Polakowski's expression hardened without a hint of a smile. No, she said, I did not make a mistake. This is the grade you earned. Most kids would have fled in terror at this point, but nothing was going to come between me and my grade point average. I stamped my foot in its little leg warmer, feeling the heat rising in my cheeks. No, I said, it isn't. Mrs. Polakowski looked at me for half a second, then she stood. She towered over me like a skyscraper with her large hands resting on her sturdy hips. Her face was reddened too, almost matching her hair. Class, she called out loudly. A hush fell. My heart sank and I suddenly felt helpless and tiny standing in front of the room. My power and anger vanished into my feet. Class, tell me how many of you would love to have received an A- in conduct, Mrs. Polakowski bellowed. I turned to look. Slowly, kids started raising their hands. Pretty soon, more than half the class had their hands in the air, and they were all staring at me like a freak. I turned beet red and choked back sudden tears, then slunk back to my desk. Thank you, Christine, Mrs. Polakowski said. Class, please open your books. The rest of the class obeyed. I, however, needed to vent some anger. So I raised the lid of my desk and gestured to my friend Audra, who sat next to me. She raised her desk, too, and we ducked our heads to hide behind them. This was how we gossiped throughout the day, through whispers and gestures. We thought we were discreet. That belief was shattered immediately as Mrs. Polakowski's voice rang out from the front of the room. Miss Whitmarsh, you wonder why you got an A-. minus." I snapped the desk shut, completely mortified. My life clearly was over. I buried my head in my hands. That again is from my memoir, The Power of the Curve. And here's the question for you, especially if you're writing a memoir, really any book, hopefully all books involve your personal stories or, you know, some reflection of who you are in your writing. So can you relate to a childhood story like that? 
Many of my readers have told me they can, so I'm glad I included it. It's why I included it, actually. My learning question for you as an author is this. What story from your childhood should you consider including in your book? And if you're writing fiction, of course, you'll give that story to one of your characters. But what seemingly trivial story from your childhood in reality reveals a, one of your adult personality traits? Now, whether this is a personality trait that you're still working on or once that you've sent, one that you've since gotten control of, what lessons can be learned from the childhood ver version of yourself that tie in with the rest of your story today as an adult? So what lessons can be learned from the childhood version of you? that you can use to relate to your readers, which is why we share personal stories. Thank you for joining me here on Your Daily Writing Habit, where I am helping you write and finish writing an awesome book. Be sure and drop by my Inc. Authors group on Facebook for motivation, accountability, book writing, publishing resources, and so much more. Until tomorrow, happy writing.